Okay, I'm going to take five minutes to very, very quickly show you uh, Scrivener. Um, and I'm going to do a screen share here so that you can see um, what I'm doing in Scrivener. And one second. And what I've done here is I've actually loaded up the Scrivener tutorial so that you can, uh, you can see it here. This is what you'll see if you do the Scrivener tutorial on your screen. Uh, when you start, you're in the typing area of Scrivener. I call it the typing area. They probably have a special name for it. Um, but essentially, the model that Scrivener works on is a binder. Uh, you have all your documents, um, and each document, each page that you're looking at in your binder is actually a separate document. Um, so I have this. This is where you start. Um, and on the left-hand side, I hope you can see my cursor, you see the binder. Um, and I'm just going to, here, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see it more prominently on the left-hand side. If you're doing the tutorial, you'll start here where it says start here. Click on that. That should come up automatically and you'll see the little Scrivener logo. Um, Scrivener is essentially uh, what it does that Word doesn't is it allows you to manage the many pieces of your book as you're, you're creating it. Um, so there's a little bit of an introductory text here that you can read on your own, but essentially the next step is to go to step one beginning. So let's go here. It says click on step one beginnings from the list on the left to start. Step one beginnings is over here. Part one basics, step one beginnings. Okay, and this is actually just the metaphor that I've explained to you. The bit on the left is called the binder. That's where you've got all your bits and pieces in your actual book. This will be chapters or scenes or however you want to organize your book. It's very, very flexible. On the right hand side is the editor and that's where you're going to see your document and you can actually, you know, spend some time here typing in the editor. Now I am typing my own book and it's going to be a, a great book all about, mm, nope, the idea is gone. You can use it just like a word processor. You've got all the, you know, you can do bold, italic, underline. It's got some function. It's not as fully functioned as Microsoft Word, but you don't really need that. Um, so what we've got here after we've introduced ourselves to the binder and the editor, and by the way, one thing that Scrivener does that Word doesn't is it backs up automatically. As soon as you go out of Scrivener, everything is saved automatically. So you don't really need to think about saving. I've been using it for a long time and haven't ever lost any data. Um, now that we've finished familiarizing ourselves with these two areas, um, let's see what it says. Let's try switching between documents again. Uh, so let's go to the one entitled Step 2 Header View. We're going to click on that now. Here we go. The header is the stuff at the top of this little document editing area. So here we've got a picture of what it's going to look like. And here it is right up here, step two, header view. This is actually my chapter title or scene title, whatever you want to use that for. So you can change that. You can click up here. Right now you see it says header view. I'm going to change that to header and other stuff view. I don't know why. Anyway, you can change that. Um, what we also have here are history buttons. Don't worry about that. I don't even know what that means. Um, but, oh, history navigation buttons. I guess they take you back to where you were before. Don't worry about it. All you have to know is that this is the header and that's where you put your title. That's all I know. Um, okay, we're not even going to do that. We're going to navigate to step three, the footer view. I'm just doing a very quick overview to show you what's involved here. Over here back on the left in the binder, footer view. Footer view is all this stuff down here. Don't worry about any of it for now. If you've used Microsoft Word and you're familiar with styles, um, Scrivener gives us some styles as well. Most of them are for screenplays. Um, I have literally never used those. In fact, this is my first time uh, seeing these features on the footer. Uh, what I do like is that you can adjust down here on the left-hand side of that footer. You can um, adjust your view. Whoa, too big. Uh, you can make your view smaller, whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, now we're going to go down here and we are going to click on step four full screen in the binder. 
I'm not going to go through all of these steps. I'm going to show you some of the screen features and I'm going to show you some of the organization features and that's it. Uh, import, export, printing, um, we're not going to look at right now. Um, I mean, it's important because if you want to get your documents out, you'll have to know how to do that, but we're not going to get into that right now. Full screen over here on the left on the binder is a very cool feature if you just want to sit and write and you don't care about any of these other features. Um, I'm going to go full screen. I'm going to click on this button up here at the top, full screen, enter full screen. And now instead of all those other things all around, I just have me and my text. And now I can just click. I have crits. And now I am typing. And here is my text. And I can just sit and let my imagination run wild as I create the work in plausible. Lots and phantasmagorical storylines. It's so great. Okay. Um, when you're finished being in full screen mode, there's a few ways to get out. My favorite way is just to hit the escape key. And then the stuff that you typed is not lost. It's still here. This is the stuff that I just typed. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. This is the stuff that I just typed. Now it's here. It's part of my story. Again, you don't have to save it. It is saved automatically. Um, I'm not going to do any of the other basic typing and display features right now. I'm going to go on here. I'm over in the binder down to organization because I want to look at uh, some of the organization features. Um, now, this is one of my favorite things. When you're looking at a section of your story, you've got it organized on these little uh, cue cards, whatever they're called. You can also view your, your section. This doesn't have to be chapters. These could be scenes. You can view your section uh, like this in a list format, uh, or you can view them as little cue cards, um, or you can just view the text. If you don't want to see those cards, you can just view that whole section as a text, and you see it's putting these little dotted lines in between. I like this cue card mode because it does uh, some of what other programs do uh, but it does it with your text. So for, oops, I just created a new one. That's so cool. Look at that. See over here in the binder, I just accidentally, I don't know what I hit. I created a new little uh, thingy called entitled, Untitled. And now I've got a new little cue card and here's where Sylvia is creating a new, uh, brand new screen. Oops, why is it not wrapping? I don't know. Oh, oh I know why. Sylvia's creation, that's the title, and then over here is the text. All right, now let's say I, so now I have all these cue cards. Once you have the cue cards, you can actually slide them around. So let's say I want to put it between step eight and step nine. Oh, is it going to go there? It did. Look at that. It went there. Uh, now this is my scene, and I can just write in here, for example, here's where Kevin finally confronts his former best friend Noah, a scene I haven't actually written yet, um, but there you go. That's a little description, but now I actually want to, I want to type this. This is where, where I want to actually enter my text. I figured out where in the story it should go. Uh, now I'm going to edit the text. If you look over here on the binder uh, in the section, part two, organization, see where it says Sylvia's creation? Let's type it there. Look at that. I have a blank screen. I can just sit here and start typing. Hey, said Kevin. Noah turned slowly towards Kevin. Yeah, you, said Kevin. I'm talking to you. This is just about the most stilted dialogue in the whole history of middle school. I know, dude said Noah. She didn't even say she's nowadays. Asked Kevin. Sure do, said Noah. Kevin simply shrugged and walked away. Okay, there's my little scene. Now let's say I decide I want this scene. I like the, I like where the scene is going. It's a nice integral part of my story, but I like I, I think it would fit better up here, somewhere else in the story. And don't worry about all these 
you know, layers and levels and whatever. All you can, all you have to do is, there's a few ways to move it around. I can go back over here to part two organization, see where I am in the binder. And I can just slide this around here. If I want to keep it in part two, but I think it belongs over there. Okay, that's easy. Um, if I want to move it up here, I can do that as well. And the way that I usually do that is in the binder. So I go over here, I click on the chapter that I want to move or the scene that I want to move. And see how I'm just, I click it, I'm holding it and I'm dragging it. And let's say I want to put it here between, I'm near the top between step three and step four. This interface is, it's a little bit sensitive. It's a little bit fiddly. And now I'm just going to drag it and drop it. Oh, so now I'm still looking in the middle of my screen at this corkboard part two organization. That scene is gone. But don't worry, the scene's not gone. I'm going to go over here to part one basics. And here is, oh, here is my new chapter. And it's exactly the same, whoops, to go into it. How do I go into it? There, double click on the heading. And you can see that it is exactly the same. It's just coming at a different point in the story. That's as much as I'm going to do of the tutorial for now. There's one more thing that I want to show you. I'm going to close the tutorial. Um, and you can just close it with the X again. You do not have to save. Um, and it's going to automatically back up your work before you go out of it. Um, oh, and look at that. Okay. And the screen sharing has stopped. Now I actually have another Scrivener window open with my actual story. And we're going to go, uh, go into there just for a couple of seconds. And I'll show you how I actually have um, this book, this book uh, structured. Um, so essentially, um, I have the uh, various scenes or chapters. I, I'm not really forcing myself to define whether they're scenes or chapters, divided up into novel ideas segments. I also have a little note here. Um, if you look at this, whoops, I'm going to click on this one, the first novel ideas section. I have the dates here, and that's just May 4th. That's to sort of remind myself of when the action is taking place on a fictitious calendar of the school year. This is the second novel ideas section, third novel ideas section. Don't ask me why it says first draft on all of these. I, I don't even know. Um, and then within each section, uh, so here we have date. I haven't written any descriptions on here. I guess I could. Um, if you don't write a description, then the header on each of these cue cards is just the first line of the text in there. So let's see here, just one second. I'm going to double click on one of these scenes, double click, and here we have the scene. Here's the title. I could give it a better title. I'm not going to bother doing it. Here's the scene, um, and I actually, I type them in Word, and then I write them by hand, type them in Word, and then paste them uh, into, uh, into Scrivener. So it's, it's a little bit awkward, but uh, anyway, so here is Novel Ideas 3. This is already submitted. And revised. This is Novel Ideas 4, which is already submitted and revised. It's a little bit slow. I don't know why it's being so slow and flaky today. Novel Ideas 5, Novel Ideas 6, 7, 8, <laughs> and then 8 is, uh, is actually as far as the book goes. So that's actually the end of the book. Uh, I have all the scenes that I'm not actually using in the story. I've moved down here to a, a section called Deleted Scenes. There's a whole lot of other features in Scrivener um, that I don't use. One of the things that I don't love about Scrivener is that uh, it has, I'm over here in the binder, it has this section called trash. And when you delete something, it never actually deletes. It just moves it down here to the trash. So there's, there's a lot of trash by the time you're actually finished writing a book. Um, but I hope that uh, this gives you an overview. I'm, I have never used this. I have never used this. Characters, places, front matter. I, I guess you could put in uh, some of your, I don't even know what. I've used it before. But, uh, and you can also use Scrivener to organize your research in much the same way that uh, somebody in the webinar last night mentioned that, uh, Erica mentioned that she uses Pinterest. So I just wanted to offer you a quick overview of how I use Scrivener. I'm sure everybody uses it differently. It is not my favorite tool, but it's, uh, it's something that does make it simpler for me to organize all the moving parts. And then it does let you export to Word, even though I'm not showing you how to do that right now. Um, one last thing before I go is when you drag a scene, let's say I'm taking the scene. This is the first scene of the book. 
Let's say I want to put it over here. I don't know why I want to put it over here. I'm moving it down here to the second section. Okay, and I put it in the section. Um, you can also use these arrows to move it up and move it down. Up, up, down, 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 down. And as you do that, it's moving them up and down. These other arrows, right and left, are a little bit crazy because they actually see the scene here, the last part of eighth grade. If you use that one, it indents it. So now this is actually a sub scene of this scene. Don't do that. If it happens by accident, which it happens to me all the time by accident, just use the left one to bump it back out. And now it's level with all of its friends. I'm going to move that back up to the first section before I forget. There it is, back in the first section. You can also actually take an entire section. See, I'm going to take now Novel Ideas 2. I'm going to take it here and move it underneath Novel Ideas 3. Uh, there we go. Novel Ideas 2 is now underneath Novel Ideas 3. I don't like that. Um, so I'm going to move it out like that, and then I'm actually going to bump it up like that. So now they're back in the proper order. You can't really break anything, but it doesn't have a ton of good undo features. So just try to have a steady hand. I'm now going to close Scrivener and we will be back. Oh, and it's going to do its little backup, even though I didn't really do anything. We don't need to sit and watch the entire backup. That's basically the whole thing. I hope that that uh, helps you, helps you uh, get started using, using Scrivia. Scri Scrivia? Uh, this is Tivia. <laughs> And that is Scrivener, and I hope it was helpful.